Good day, everybody. It is currently the 15th of September 2014, making this update right around well, 10 Universal Standard Time. That's about 6 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. And we are continuing the track Typhoon Luis or Kalmiki. Uh, still rolling off here towards the west right now at about 30 kilometers per hour. Winds at 120, gusting up to 176 kilometers per hour, according to the Japan Meteorological Agency. So this is a still a fairly strong typhoon, or just barely at typhoon intensity, but enough to cause some damage out here as it does continue to intensify. When you take a look at the latest satellite imagery, it is continuing to roll off towards the west, continuing to regather its strengths after being torn up by friction over the island of Luzon back here towards the east. But right now, you can see those rain bands really wrapping in around this storm system. The eye is starting to clear up again and that is why that typhoon intensity is continuing to be maintained with this storm system. Well, let's take a look at some images from earlier on in the day because it did cause some damage during well basically here on Sunday and extending out through Monday morning it, it rolled over the islands. We did see three deaths actually come out of this. All of them actually in Visayas due to a ferry that capsized and only three casualties. There was about 120 people on board so as far as past historical events and what we've seen in the past is actually a fairly low number it really is a tragic situation but usually when we hear um, about typhoons making landfall in the Philippines and especially when there is a maritime accident the death toll is often much much higher so good news um, it did remain limited, and I know that the Philippines are gunning for a zero uh, casualty rate. And as far as anything on land, though, uh, it does look like all the evacuation orders that were put in place out here into northern Luzon. And that is the good news. Looks like local government officials filed through on this, but a lot of people in this area of the Philippines, it's not uncommon to see typhoons, especially off here towards Cagayan, Aurora, Isabella. So when the storm system came overhead, it, and it did remain in a relatively weak stage at the time of landfall. It was only Category 1, so we didn't see no Category 5 monster type of system as we've seen with Ramasoon when that came on shore. So uh, the good news is we did see limited damage, but still a lot of power outages out here, still some reports of flooding, and the flood threat is still going to be there as we continue to look ahead throughout the rest of Monday, even extending out through Tuesday as our storm system continues to move off there towards the west. Also continuing to see that moisture flow in from the south, so parts of a size are still going to be looking at these showers. But the threat is really going to be shifting on Tuesday from the Philippines and now over there towards the west into southern portions of China. Over here, it's going to be a major rainmaker. I already see that. The winds are going to be a, a problem with this storm system, of course. Looking at Category 1 winds when it does come on shore, uh, much weaker than what we've seen with Ramasoon. But Ramasoon did cause some damage as far as the winds, but I think the rain is going to be a major issue, not just for, well, Haiyan and over towards Hong Kong, where you're probably going to be seeing tropical storm strength winds but much of southern China as this extends out into this area this is going to drop some areas as much as three to four hundred possibly even more uh, millimeters of rainfall than that so flooding as we continue to go through a well, basic sending out there through Saturday or excuse me Wednesday that is and Thursday as that storm system does continue to push on shore there in Guangdong province it's going to move towards the northwest even northern portions of Vietnam you'll be seeing that heavy rain especially as areas just inland where you hits these mountains you can see these areas in the darker purples that's that moisture getting squeezed out as it continues to come on shore so you see that persistent suddenly flow of the rainfall pushing out there not only in Hainan but also in the Vietnam southern China and that's going to be causing that flood threat and it doesn't last just one day as we've seen in the Philippines and one reason why I think uh, we're seeing limited amount of damage because this storm system flew across Luzon but it lingers here and also enhances the monsoon so uh, some areas of Vietnam you're going to be looking at rainfall over over the course of several days all due to this storm system. So that's going to be the main topic throughout the rest of the week out here. Now, while all this is going on, we are, of course, continuing to watch another area in the tropics. And I do want to mention this because I'm already seeing actually some Pagasa officials uh, putting out some frightening statements here. Not to be a critic or anything, but uh, they actually put out that uh, the new cyclone was forming and it was going to take the same exact path as Luis or Kalmiki here. What I am seeing right now is that not occurring. We have our typhoon over here towards the west, and to say that this broad area of just random cloud cover, it's very weak. It's going to become a typhoon in the near future. Uh, it, it's kind of a very, very early statement, and I think very, very rash. Um, that's my personal opinion, and... Uh, 
So you have to listen to your official agencies, of course. But right now, it's just a low-pressure area. And what we always say is you don't try to make any statements as far as where and exactly a storm system is going to go until we get past that initial genesis phase. And we're not there yet. We've been saying that all week with Cal Mickey. If you remember last week, we're basically extending from parts of Visayas and Luzon all the way up there towards Okinawa. And uh, some people were asking, well, will it hit Taiwan or how about Mindanao? We kept saying, you know, the genesis phase. Take a look at some of these model outlooks. First, we'll go through the NAV gem, and this one actually pulling a storm system and has it rolling off there across the Okasata Islands. Much, much different than Luis here. Uh, let's pull up the, Na the GFS model. It doesn't even really initialize the storm. It gets totally torn apart and pulls off there towards Okinawa. We can go back to our ECMWF there on the Meteor. Thing. And this one does keep it on that westerly track. So if we're using just one of these three models, this one, it, it carries it west in a very similar track. But it look at that. I mean... It, 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 compare the wind field around this to the wind field around that. It's much, much weaker. It'd just be a low pressure area bringing some rain showers. So right now, we're still going to look at this storm system. What I see right now is a lot of dry air wrapping into this. It is going to be rolling over these sea surface temperatures, which have been kind of upwelled so it's relatively cooler but it's still fairly warm out there allow for intensification but at this time it's still fairly fairly disorganized so i want to hold back i want to say that we're going to be watching it right now but hold back on putting out any forecast my point of view but right now though it is a low pressure area and even on the 48 hour forecast the japan meteorological agency does have still a low pressure area right there so we're going to continue to keep an eye on it for now though the big topic of course is our typhoon and uh for those of you in the southern china this one's still coming it's going to be bringing some nasty weather over the next 48 hours so here at westernpacificweather.com we will continue to keep you updated and posted so any questions comments or suggestions please post them down there in the comment box below stay safe out there guys